Welcome to Calf Academy, your source for calf care education. This Calf Academy topic is going to focus in on the ventilation of the pre-weaned calf barn. As an overview, we'll talk about ventilation basics, the different types of ventilation, natural, negative pressure, and positive pressure, and then some ideas about how we're going to analyze ventilation in existing barns. The calf has a few very basic needs. Nutrition is the obvious one, both the quality of nutrition and the quantity. Obviously, free access to clean, fresh water is very important. A calf needs an area to rest and live in that's clean, dry, and comfortable. And finally, they need fresh air. Fresh air, ideally, that is draft-free so it doesn't create a chill on the calf. The basic thing is we want to provide fresh air uniformly at the calf level at all areas that the calf is exposed to within the housing facility. So really the way we can think about proper ventilation is making inside air as close as it can be as fresh outside air and distributing it evenly throughout the barn. So outside air we could bring into the barn is going to do a couple things. It's going to mix with the in barn air contaminants and then ideally we'd like to exhaust that out of the barn. Or we can think of it as if we bring in this clean outside air and we can dilute out the contaminants in the inside air just by a constant state of new air coming in and uh, creating that dilution effect. This is a representation of a calf barn with natural ventilation where it shows fresh air coming in on one side, mixing with the inside air, bringing in the dust and heat and gases and moisture, mixing it all together along with the pathogens and the air can either exit out the other side wall or out through a opening in the ridge of the building. So newborn calves, they have little resistance to disease. So it stands to reason that the fresh air must be clean and readily available to the calf and without having a draft. It just makes sense that we'd locate a calf barn if we have a choice on the windward side of the farm. The windward side is on the direction that the wind is coming from. So we minimize the types of pathogens that would come from the older animals, you know, the heifers and cows or steers. And, you know, there's just one thing that we do know from Frank Welcome at Cornell that airborne pathogens, they can be carried by air currents for several hundred yards. So trying to locate these calf barns downwind of the older animals just creates an ongoing problem. So once again, our goal is to have the inside air a lot like the outside air. One of the things that we have to keep in mind with that when we use natural ventilation or other kinds of ventilation for that matter, the inside humidity and temperature will most likely be just like what's on the outside. However, if we have a mechanically ventilated barn, we may serve to bring in more of the fresh air that will help exhaust some of the warmer, more moist air that's inside the building, decreasing the humidity levels as a result. So again, the concentration of the gases, the dust, pathogens, we want those to be very low, either through direct exhaustion of these contaminants or dilution of the contaminants. So in order to do that, we need to think in terms of how often are we going to exchange the air within the building to meet some air quality goals. Because having good ventilation goals can really help us take care of some of the things that poor ventilation causes. Higher respiratory problems, decreased feed intakes, poor feed conversion rates, and we can help prevent a lot of these, these three problems through different types of ventilation. Natural, negative pressure, and positive pressure. What natural just simply means is we take advantage of the prevailing winds and use that to ventilate a building. Negative pressure, that means we're using exhaust fans to pull the air out of the building. And of course that means we have to have properly spaced and sized to inlets to bring air in to replace what's being exhausted out. 
And positive pressure types of systems work to bring in fresh air and distribute it evenly throughout the animal area 24 hours a day. So let's get into a discussion about natural ventilation. So what are the pros of natural ventilation? One, it's really fairly low cost, no electrical use. Uh, we have to make sure that we pay attention to the prevailing winds and how we manage the curtains that might be on a barn or open up doors and windows, those sorts of things. But in general, you know, if we've got the building located in a place where it has access to good wind, good location away from other buildings, natural ventilation can work most of the time. The exception being if you have a really wide barn. Oftentimes with really wide barns, you cannot get air winds to penetrate all the way through the barn. So typically when we think of natural ventilation, again, we think about prevailing winds. Uh, we think about sidewall openings, eaves, open ridges. We want to make sure we think about the animals that are in there will create heat, which will create what we call a thermal buoyancy. Thermal buoyancy means that the air, warm air, just has a tendency to rise. In young calf barns, calves don't produce near enough heat to create this feature of thermal buoyancy. So let's look at this diagram. This is where the outside air is cold. When it comes in, say through the eave above the curtain, the cold air comes into the building and drops and dumps immediately to the floor. And by doing that, it may force some of the warmer air up through the open ridge. And then again, you know, if we have a wind going across that open ridge, we can create like a suction to pull some of that warmer air out. However, let's look at the converse. If we've got warmer air on the outside of the barn that's than what is on the inside, that warm air will have a tendency to just continue to rise, go out the open ridge, and not do a great deal to the air that's at the floor in the barn. So you can see in this picture, it shows the polluted air that would continue to exist in this barn in a situation with nothing but warm air coming in. Obviously, when you look at this barn, if we could decrease the open sides of this barn and allow more of that air to come in from the side, that would uh, do a lot to improve the conditions in that barn. All of those things are work really fine when the wind is blowing, but when there's no wind, we are in still air, natural ventilation pretty much loses its effect and we end up with a lot of contaminated air within the structure, within the building. Which then that brings us to ways to ventilate a barn when the air is still, or maybe the air is going in the wrong direction, or we just don't get quite the effect that we want from natural ventilation. We start thinking about, and traditionally it's been, a negative pressure system. Negative pressure means that we're pulling air out of the barn. We're essentially running the fan so it sucks the air out of the barn. So with negative pressure, people sometimes think it's more economical than positive pressure. And that is true with a smaller type of barn, very few fans running, good inlets set up, and the building is designed and the ventilation system is installed and designed properly. Obviously, with a negative pressure system, it works in still air. The size of the exhaust system and the exhaust fans have to be still calculated to make sure that you're moving the right amount of air, especially in larger barns. In recent years, the development of a positive pressure system has been uh, more common. The positive pressure system works obviously different than the negative pressure in that the positive pressure system you actually bring air into the barn and distribute the air throughout the barn with tubes that have holes in them and the holes are positioned to provide a blanket of air fresh air to the animal at all all areas within the building within the pens most commonly in positive pressure systems, the design of the system is set up to exchange the air approximately four times an hour. So every 15 minutes you could turn over all the air in the barn. That's really what's typically called a winter ventilation system. 
So these air jets that come out of the holes of the tube are designed to provide that blanket of air to the calves without a draft. So typically what the definition of that is, four feet above the ground or above the floor of the barn, you do not feel any type of a wind speed. And that draft is defined as less than 60 feet per minute of wind speed. These positive pressure systems have been shown to be very effective in reducing gaff respiratory disease. But this effectiveness happens when each positive pressure system is designed for each specific barn. So each system is a custom design. It is not a one size fits all type of system. So with a positive pressure system, you're taking the advantage of natural ventilation, only you're doing it with the positive pressure tubes. And oftentimes you can do it with a lot fewer fans. So the cost becomes high for the tube, higher for the tube, but it is oftentimes much less in cost for electricity and total number of fans because you can utilize one fan over a wide range of sizes within a barn and do that quite effectively. We of course still have to think about how much bedded space we have per calf in, in the group housing. We want about 30 square feet or more of bedded space. Oftentimes it's more like 40 square feet of total space per calf in group housing. And we always have to continue to think about making sure we have good, clean, deeply bedded surfaces for the calves, especially when the weather is cool. And it is always a benefit to try and control moisture in a building, even with deeply bedded surfaces, you know, to have drainage below the bedding, anything that we can do to help minimize the amount of of liquid that the calf would be exposed to in the terms of urine, manure, and ammonia levels. When we build a barn, the best orientation is typically east and west. And having an east-west orientation allows for the heat of the sun in the summertime to not go into the sides of the barn as readily as it would be if, if it was in a different orientation. So having a single or a double row within these barns so we can limit the width of the barn to 35 feet or less, that is really a benefit for these types of barns. That way we've got enough space to leave about three feet between the back of the calf pen and the side wall of the barn. And then of course, what really works well is to have a solid panel between each calf and leave the back and the front can be open. Open without the solid panels. You know, you could use like a fence or a mesh or something like that. This is an example from the University of Wisconsin of a typical type of calf pen set up in, a, in an enclosed barn. You have the solid panels on the side, the ends open, you have the panel extending out the front, discouraging the nose-to-nose -nose contact between calves. These type of pens are easy to maintain, easy to observe calves, and work very, very well. In contrast to the calves in this picture, where they have no solid dividers between them, each calf has access to one another, nose-to-nose -nose contact, and these barns are typically much more difficult to manage than in situations like in the previous slide where we eliminated the calves from having that nose-to-nose -nose contact. The University of Wisconsin did a very in-depth research looking at the factors that increases the risk for respiratory disease in free-weaned calf housing. They looked at airborne bacteria counts, counts taken at the alley and in the calf pen, the types of pen setups, you know, what kind of barriers that were within each pen, and they also looked at the nesting score. Um, the nesting score on a scale of one to three were Calves had virtually no bedding, up to a nesting score of three where they had deep bedding where when the calf would nestle down in the straw, you couldn't even see the calf's legs. And number two was somewhere in between. So those were the things they looked at in this study back in 2006. So this is a graph that came out of that study where they assessed the prevalence of respiratory disease on the farms that they had looked at, and they compared it to the amount of airborne bacteria, the nesting score, 
and they compared it to the presence or absence of a solid barrier. So this graph is very, very informative, but it's complicated. So it, it takes a little while to study the graph and decide uh, what are the key features that we should look at. As the bacteria counts along the x-axis, as those numbers are lower, you can see that there's the shape of each one of the lines causes a lower prevalence of respiratory disease with smaller airborne bacteria counts. The other thing we can look at is the nesting score. As nesting score gets better from a one to a three, you can also see that the prevalence goes down. And then within each one of those, if there is a plus or a minus a solid barrier between the calves, if there's a solid barrier, prevalence of respiratory disease decreases, even with within different nesting scores. So take time to study this graph and really understand the important factors involved in decreasing respiratory disease in the pre-weaned calf barn. We already mentioned putting drainage into the bedding. Example of that would be to have a gravel base and within the, beneath the gravel base, there would be a, a drain tile, a drain tile that would be, you know, a cloth covered drain tile so that it doesn't plug up something that would allow the liquid to be carried to outside storage. This really gives a benefit to the calf of moving that liquid away, lower ammonia levels, lower bacteria levels, and much, much easier to manage the deep bedding that we like to see in these calf barns. And this deep bedding can be managed much easier with much, much lower usage of straw you don't need near as much straw when we can manage the drainage out of the building. So in order to do an analysis of the building, one of the very important things to do is know what kind of fans you're dealing with, whether you want to use a negative pressure or a positive pressure. And you have to have the barn dimensions, the height to the sidewall, the height to the peak, the width and the length. And then it always it's good to know how many calves are going to be within the barn. For a positive pressure system, then we use all this information and we size the fan according to the size of the building. So the size of the building, the total cubic feet in the building tells us what kind of fan to buy. And then according to the size of the fan, that will tell us what diameter of tube that we need to buy. And then we have to put holes and position the holes within the tube in those holes are put in there according to the needs of the calf. So where are the air jets coming out of the tube going to reach the areas of the calf pens? So barn dimension, fan size, tube size, and hole size and position become the key factors. The University of Wisconsin has done a marvelous job of designing a spreadsheet that they train people to use and gives a great tool to put together these positive pressure tube systems. They work correctly and are installed in the right way to make the best benefit for fresh air for our calves. The university a couple times a year offers training classes on how to use this calculator and how to design the tube systems for the positive pressure system. And this slide is just another example of a positive pressure system that includes both a winter system that has about four air changes an hour and it also shows in the lighter color green what we'd call a summer system. Big tube, big holes, lots of additional air changes and those sorts of things can be put together in, in most barns where you have a dual system, one for winter and one for summer. In this slide, there's a couple different pictures of what a tube might look like in a barn. In the picture on the left, the tube is centered between rows of pens, elevated up above the floor, so it's up and out of the way of the equipment. The picture on the right uh, shows a view of the tube, uh, how it would hang on a double suspension system. So the tube is suspended between two cables. And this type of system, this type of tube application really works well because it makes this tube very stable 
and doesn't swing around wildly when the wind is blowing. Very nice system. Sometimes these positive pressure systems are not installed correctly. In the picture on the left, you can see the tube that is placed up into the rafters. The holes in the tube are directed right towards one of the braces that's within the rafters. And what that brace is going to do is deflect any air that's coming out of the hole in the tube and prevent it from getting down to the calf. Those are things to watch out for when you are evaluating barns that have positive pressure systems already installed. On the photograph on the right, this was a different type of issue. This tube was, as you can hardly see within the picture, but it doesn't seem to be very well inflated. The tube was very, very slack, and this was a combination of having the wrong size holes and the wrong size fan for the tube, or conversely, the tube was wrong for the fan that was put in that system. In this particular case, the entire system had to be reevaluated and reinstalled with a different type of design. Many times within barns, we need to mount the fan in an outside wall to provide the fresh air to the tube. And as is often the case, there are obstructions on the outside wall, like sliding doors, for example, that we have to build a ductwork to bring in the fresh air and construct the duct in a way that allows the fan to be properly served by the incoming air. And then the tube is attached directly to the fan inside the building within this passive duct that we can design and build to meet the needs of you know, the building and the calves. This is an example of the fan was installed in one of these passive ducts. And as you can see in the previous slide, there was some instructions on the size of the duct that was needed so the fan does not become starved for air. In this example, the fan was starved for air because the duct wasn't made properly and that caused some flapping of the tube and eventually for the tube to wear out because of the flapping. As soon as the duct was changed where the inlet was proper and the fan wasn't starved for air, this system worked very, very well. That concludes this presentation on ventilation for the pre weaned calf. Thank you for completing this Calf Academy course. If you have follow-up questions, please contact your Milk Products National Account Manager.